Hi, YouTubers. I'm Ada. And I'm Daryl. And welcome to Turner's Flipside YouTube channel. So today we want to continue our conversation about, you know, like various things that we um, worked on uh, or we are working on, uh, we've had to deal with in terms of getting ourselves to Mexico. So when last we left off, we talked a little bit about, you know, the things that we did personally to just kind of, you know, work up to like work up our nerves and what the physical things we were doing. Today, we want to talk a little bit more about uh, the more legal things that we, we managed. So the first thing I think was what the visa. Yeah. Check with the consulate, uh, which was a quite a process in and of itself. Mexico is in the process of doing a number of changes. They've changed the regulations for getting a visa. They've renovated their website. And so we had a few challenges uh, getting on, getting onto the website. The website was down for a while, so we couldn't even schedule an appointment. Yeah, I'm sorry. But, um, before you start on that, can, let's talk about the first time we went to Mexico okay. and how we got our visa. For we, mm -hmm. we were there for like, what, two or three weeks? Two weeks, yes. Two weeks, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so let's talk a little bit about mm -hmm. that, what we did to travel okay. to the first time. Sure. So we, um, we, we got plane tips. And uh, if you've flown to um, various vacation spots before, you went through a process where while you're on the plane approaching the country, they they hand out a slip of paper for you to fill out. And that is a actually a visa form. And the airlines over the years have worked at this process out so it's pretty simple and so simple that you probably don't even realize what you're doing. <laughs> but you're actually applying for a visa while you're on the plane as you're getting ready to land. Something similar happens on the cruise ships. Um, same kind of piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that is your visa. And when you get to the country, the bottom half is given to you at, when you get to the customs agent uh, after they ask you how long you're going to be in the country. And they actually write on that slip of paper that you're going to retain how many days you're going to be in the country. Mm -hmm. And that is your <laughs> limit for how long you can stay. Yeah, now that's an important point. You really need to be present to the date that you're supposed to be out of the country because if you, you know, if you get caught on an expired visa, guess what? Bye-bye country. Yes. They're going to put you on a plane and head you back to where you came from or somewhere else. You'll get deported. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's a really important point. So anyway, you know, we were there for two weeks and then do we want to talk about like the, the limits the time limits that you can um, yeah I, I'll say because that's a, actually a quite an issue right now with the Mexican government Mer uh, people from the US in the past had got an automatic 180 day um, visa and, time and limit. not just US Canada you know all over mm -hmm. whoever travels to that country yeah it, it, it's um, and so in, in particular people from the US expected to get a 180 day visa and that had been a kind of the standard uh, that you got whenever you went to the country. But things are changing. They've uh, changed the, now you only get what you actually can show or prove that you need. So your return ticket shows the number of days you're going to be in, in, in the country. Um, and in some cases, I'm see, seeing on social media that people are not not necessarily getting the number of days they need. Like they might say they need 30 days in the, in the and custom agent might give them uh, 15 days. You know, so I'm hearing all sorts of stories about uh, restrictions on the number of days you can stay in the country. And the reasoning behind that is because in the past, people that tra traveled to Mexico, uh, stayed for 180 days, come to the U.S. for a day, then go back for another 180 days, and they had been abusing the system because they didn't want to go through the process of getting a residency permit. And so they would just use that 180-day repeat process to stay in Mexico actually for years. And so there's a bit of an issue, you know, so if you look at it from the U.S. standpoint, if Mexicans are coming here and not getting a residency permit and, and overstaying their visas, 
you know, we, there's quite an issue, with the, quite a bit of discussion here about Mexicans doing that. Well, you know, they have a government in a, in a legitimate sovereign country too. And so they view it from their side the same way. They want people to stay for a, a you know, the proper amount of days that they've allocated and then at the end of that time, go home. Right. So, um, so what we had to do, and this was quite challenging for us, is we had to apply for an appointment. Now, first, let me back up. So when we went to Mexico, we actually decided then, yes, we love this area. We were at Lake, in Lake Chapala, but we finally decided on San Antonio. And we, we really love the area. We, we don't want to be really Americans. Uh, I mean, not Americans. We don't want to be, you know, from the United States. We are from the United States. I'm botching this up, but <laughs> I think what you're trying to say is you wanted you wanted to fully immerse immerse in the culture, in the culture. yeah, and not yeah. be in an area that was really just a little 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 U.S. Yeah, in Mexico. I mean, why move if I'm going to do that? So, so we were looking for an area where it's not like we are have an aversion to being in, you know among Americans, but really want to be within the Mexican culture. So we kind of moved in an area where there are more, it's more indigenous, and there are few expats, but not a lot in our area. Yeah, there's a large uh, uh, number of people from the from Canada and the U.S. that live in the Lake Chapala area. Uh, but the Ahihic uh, area, Ahihic is a town on Lake Chapala, uh, that is particularly, has particularly a large number of people from the U.S. and Canada and particularly retirees, it's a great area to retire to because of the climate and, and the friendliness of the, 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 the people who live there and, and lots of reasons. Uh, so it's a big magnet for people who retire. And so San Antonio is on the fringes of that. And so we're less uh, immersed in the people from the U.S. and Canada. So anyway, while we were in Mexico, we found a place to stay in San Antonio. And we actually... Um, signed a lease for a year okay now we're back in the states and we want to try to get a visa temporal to stay for that year and we scheduled uh, a, an appointment with the consulate which was quite an ordeal in and of itself because we, were, we caught them at a time when they were making changes to the website and uh, with the pandemic and limited limited appointments and um, got there uh, they require certain uh, criteria for either a temporal, which is what we were after, which is good for a year and is renewable at the end of each year, or a permanente, which is good for life. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the temp and when I made the appointment, I did not realize that we could not make a single appointment for the two of us. You have to schedule an appointment for, for me and a separate appointment for Ada. And so those are things that we didn't realize until we got to the consulate and they said, no, you can't go up to your interview together. It's just for one of you. And when I got to the interview, they, you know, you have to bring paperwork showing that you can support yourself, that you have sufficient financial means. And, uh, and so I, the, the documentation that I had was for six months, which my understanding for a temporal was a six month requirement. But she said, no, it's a 12 month requirement. You have to show document bank statements that cover a 12-month period. Now, different consulates follow different rules, and so some consulates allow six months. And, uh, and, and so there was some confusion about that, and I still have some questions about that because I plan to go back to the consulate and, and, and revisit that question. Yeah, but to, to make a long story short, we, after three visits to the Mexican consulate and turned away three times, we still don't have our visa temporal. So we're three weeks, we're moving the 1st of May, 2022. And uh, we're now about three weeks from the move and we don't have that particular visa. So we are just going to, um, you know, move with a 180 day visa and then we'll come back to the United States uh, and go back to the Mexican consulate mm -hmm. and see if we can qualify at that point. So we're we're not going to, you know, like make it wrong or make a big deal out of it. We're just going to continue with the process. So 
This video is to just apprise you, make you aware of the challenges that you could face. You know, don't give up, don't get frustrated with them. It's their, their rules, their country. And we just have to, you know, figure out how to, how to get along and, and, um, you know, like yeah. follow the, make it work, follow, you know, follow the, the uh, process. At the end of the day, the, 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 all, everyone I met at the council, it was very friendly, very helpful. And so the process itself wasn't, wasn't painful. It was just that, you know, there were certain things they required and we didn't have those. And so we've got to do it again. Yeah. And of course, you know, we don't speak fluent Spanish. We're taking Spanish lessons and I know, we know a little bit of Spanish. So that also, um, you know, like uh, is a part of the challenge is, uh, most of the documents are in Spanish. All of the documents are in <laughs> Spanish, actually. And so we have to, you know, we have to have them translated and all that. So, you know, a lot of the, the challenges are on our end. And then there are some challenge, you know, there are some challenges on their end. And like, we're not getting complete information when we go to the website or, or you know, when we talk to people, we get different, we get different information from different people. and and. Mm -hmm. Again, we're not making it wrong or making it mean anything. We're just going to continue. I, hey, that's how we're going to learn the process. So, so that I think, um, oh, and one other thing real quickly is that we have a pet. And so we also uh, want to be sure that we have all the proper documents and everything for him to you know, to cross the border with us. When we went before, we got his paperwork, all his shots and everything, and, he, and it was fine. They had no problem with it. And so before we move again, we want to make sure that we're up to date on all the rules and regulations and requirements so that we don't have so many issues. I, I assert that we will have challenges until, you know, we, we become acclimated. And so that's it. That's what we've got for you today. So thank you for tuning in and, um, you know, look for some other videos. And uh, if you like what we're, you know, like our videos and what we're uh, sharing with you, don't forget to subscribe. Press the button and subscribe. Thank you again. We'll see you next time. Bye.